Today's story is called Never Get a D&D Player Over Craigslist Featuring Havoc Shadow I never thought finding a new player for a Pokemon D&D campaign would lead to such a nightmare. It all started when our regular group dwindled down to just three of us. We needed a fourth player, and in the moment of desperation, I turned to Craigslist. I posted a simple ad. Looking for a player to join our Pokemon D&D campaign must be reliable and enthusiastic. Within hours, I received a response from a woman named Alara. Her email was oddly poetic, filled with references to mythical creatures and arcane spells. She claimed to be a sorceress in real life, and her enthusiasm was infectious. I was excited to have her join us, but there was something about her that felt off. When she arrived for our first session, I was taken aback. Alara was dressed in flowing dark robes adorned with silver stars, her long hair cascading over her shoulders. She looked like she had stepped straight out of a fantasy novel. The other players, Jake and Maya, exchanged glances, but I shrugged it off. We were all a bit eccentric, right? As the game progressed, Alara's character, a powerful sorceress named Nyx, quickly became the center of attention. She rolled her dice with an intensity that made us uneasy. The way she leaned forward, her eyes gleaming with excitement, felt almost predatory. I tried to focus on the game, but I couldn't shake the feeling that she was watching me a bit more than the others. After the session, I received an email from her. It was filled with compliments about my DMing skills, but it also contained unsettling undertones. You have a gift for storytelling, she wrote. I can't wait to see where adventure takes us. I feel a connection to you, like we were destined to create something magical together. I brushed it off as enthusiasm, but the emails kept coming. Each one grew more personal, more intense. She began to reference things I hadn't shared, like my favorite Pokemon, and even my childhood memories. It felt invasive, like she was digging into my life without my consent. The next lesson, she brought a set of dice that she claimed were cursed. She insisted that they would enhance our game, but I felt a chill run down my spine as she rolled them. The dice seemed to roll unnaturally, landing on critical hits far too often. Every time she rolled, a strange energy filled the room and I could swear I heard faint, eerie Pokemon cries echoing in the background, like whispers of ghostly creatures. It felt unsettling, but the others were too caught up in the game to notice. As the days passed, Alara's presence became more suffocating. She started slowing up at my door unannounced, claiming that she was in the neighborhood. I tried to be polite, but her visits felt intrusive. She would linger far too long, her eyes scanning my shelves filled with Pokemon memorabilia, her fingers brushing against my books as if she was trying to absorb my interest. One evening, after a particularly long session, I received yet another email from her. I've been thinking about our characters and how they mirror our lives. You and I are so much alike, don't you think? I can feel the magic between us. I felt a knot in my stomach. This wasn't just about the game anymore. It was becoming personal. That night I lay in bed, unable to sleep. The eerie noises returned, echoing in my mind. I could almost hear the cries of ghastly in the distance. The call of a Mimikyu. I tried to convince myself it was just my imagination, but a feeling of being watched crept over me. I glanced out my window, half expecting to see Alara standing there, her dark robes billowing in the night. The next session, I decided to confront her. I need to set some boundaries. But when I arrived, the atmosphere was different. Jake and Maya were already there, their pale faces. Did you see, did you hear what was happening? Maya asked, her voice trembling. Alara, she's been talking about you. 
she said she's going to make you her chosen one in the game. I felt a chill run down my spine. What do you mean, I asked, my heart racing. She's going to cast a spell on you, Jake added, his eyes widened with fear. She's been bringing up some dark stuff in her character's backstory. It's like she's trying to bind you to her. I glanced at the cursed dice she brought in the last time, now sitting at the table. They seemed to glimmer under the dim light, almost beckoning me to touch them. I felt a wave of nausea run over me. We need to talk to her, I said, trying to sound a bit more confident than I felt. As the door creaked open, Alara entered, her presence filling the room like a shadow. She wore a knowing smile, her eyes glinting with an unsettling intensity. I hope you're ready for an unforgettable session, she said, her voice smooth and melodic. Tonight we'll be delving into the depths of our characters' destinies. I exchanged a glance of worried look with Jake and Maya, but we pressed on, hoping to steer the game back to a more comfortable direction. As we played, Alara's character, Nyx, began to dominate the narrative. She cast spells that seemed to manipulate the very fabric of her game, bending the rules in a way that felt unnatural. The atmosphere grew thick with tension, and I could hear the eerie Pokemon crisis again, louder this time. They were coming from the walls themselves. Suddenly, Alara leaned closer, her voice dropping to a whisper. You know, I've been thinking about how our characters have become intertwined. What if Nyx and your character were bonded by fate? It would be magical. Her breath was warm against my ear, and I recoiled instinctively. Let's just keep it to the game, Alara, I said, trying to maintain my composure. We don't need to mix our lives with the characters. Alara's smile faltered for a moment, but then she regained composure. Of course, just a game, she said, though her eyes betrayed a deeper intent. As the session continued, I felt increasingly trapped in a web of her making. The game became a battleground, not just for the characters, but my own sense of autonomy. I could sense that Alara was pushing the boundaries, testing how far she could go. Finally, I decided enough was enough. I think we need to take a break from this campaign, I announced, my voice steady, despite the turmoil inside. It's becoming too intense and I need uh, some space. Alara's expression darkened for a moment. I saw a flicker of something dangerous in her eyes. Space? But we're just getting started. You wouldn't want to miss out on the magic that we can create together, would you? I stood my ground. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I need to prioritize my own comfort. Let's take a break. With that, I gathered my things and left, the weight of her gaze heavy on my back. As I stepped outside, the night air felt refreshing, but the echoes of the game lingered in my mind. I knew I had to distance myself from Alara and her increasing obsessive behavior. In the days that followed, I focused on my own interests reconnecting with friends and hobbies that brought me joy. I realized that while gaming can create bonds, it's essential to maintain healthy boundaries. As for Alara, I heard through mutual friends that she continued her campaign, but I chose to step away completely. The magic of the game was no longer worth the cost of my peace of mind. And as for the eerie Pokemon noises, they faded away, leaving me with a sense of relief and knowledge that sometimes stepping back is the best way to reclaim your own story. Happy boy, thank you so much for the wonderful read. You did a great job, buddy. A great ass job. If you enjoyed today's story, go ahead and check out Havoc's channel. It'll be in the description below. And I appreciate you guys for enjoying the series so far for all these creepy pastas. We'll catch you in the next one. And uh <coughs>